In today's video, we're going to be talking about the possibility of something of the sorts of a PlayStation Game Pass actually tying into PlayStation Now. Somebody has discovered an interesting setting, but take it as just rumor for now. CD Projekt Red is teasing a release date for Cyberpunk 2077. It looks to be a far ways out. However, they are aiming for the game to hit on current gen platforms. Naughty Dog yesterday celebrated the fifth year anniversary of The Last of Us, and we've got some incredible sales numbers on that game. On top of that, we've got a big component of The Last of Us 2 confirmed, and we're going to talk a little bit about the Final Fantasy VII Remake and where it's standing. Kingdom Hearts 3 is about to be released, so you would think that development of this FF7 Remake is going to go into full swing. Starting things off, back in 2015, Sony introduced the PlayStation Now feature, which many of you probably have not even checked out. What it essentially does is lets you stream all kinds of PlayStation experiences from PlayStation 3 games, PlayStation 4 games, I believe there are a couple of PS2 games on there. Issue with the PlayStation Now service is that it's very much reliant on your internet connection while you don't have to download any games and that's kind of nice. For a lot of people, if you're on a wireless connection or your internet connection just isn't very good, playing games through PlayStation Now is not going to be the ideal way to do so. Even someone like me that has a very solid internet connection and on wired connection, I did notice some input lag, so you need absolutely top tier internet connection for PlayStation Now to be feasible. Unlike a service like Xbox's Game Pass, where you could just download the games onto your hard drive. However, a Reddit user in StateRX stumbled across a download game option in PlayStation Now's menu. Now, when he clicked on the download game button, nothing actually happened, and the button prompt doesn't appear on all games. The screenshot he took was from Alpha Protocol. This would be the feature that really put PlayStation Now over the top. Currently, it has a slew of games already available, hundreds upon hundreds of games, and some of them are really good. Unfortunately, they did just take off Red Dead Redemption, so that does really suck. But there are still a lot of great games on there. A lot of the Yakuza titles, Nino Kuni 1, Infamous, a lot of excellent PlayStation 3 games that I would love to check out. Unfortunately, playing them through the typical Now service just doesn't give you the best results possible. Let's hope that this download game thing actually evolves into something of the sorts where we can download games onto our PlayStation 4 and play them directly because that's really what's gonna take PlayStation now to the next level. I know they're all in on this streaming thing, they bought Gaikai, but let's be real, nobody's really adamantly using PlayStation now at this point. Moving right along, one of the most anticipated games at E3 was of course Cyberpunk 2077. While we didn't see any brand new gameplay footage, we did get a new cinematic trailer and there was a behind closed door gameplay demo that was shown to press. And by all accounts, what we've heard is that the game is incredible and even more ambitious than The Witcher 3. Speaking to Game Informer, Quest designer Patrick Mills talked about the game and said this, quote, I've heard a number of people say that when talking about the game moving generations. The current console generation is what we're aiming for. We are aiming for Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and of course PC as well. Now that is what they're currently aiming for, but they have also said that Cyberpunk 2077's official release is still a few years out. I doubt this game is releasing in 2019. Chances are this will be a 2020 release, and by that point, you would think that if Cyberpunk 2077 was released on current gen consoles, there would also be a next generation option available so it would be a cross-gen title next generation version is probably the version that has beefier visuals a higher resolution all that good stuff better frame rates technical performance because at this point while we still have a couple of years in this generation you can tell that it's winding down Microsoft even dropped a little bit of a hint that the next Xbox is under work so who knows based on what CD Projekt Red is saying it looks like Cyberpunk 2077 isn't scheduled for a 2019 release and if say it was to be released in early 2020 well, at that point, why not just make the game a cross-gen title if the next generation consoles are coming late 2020? But all of that is speculation on my part. CD Projekt Red is still aiming at the game to be an Xbox One, PS4, and PC title. Can't deny it, it's all true. But everybody still wants to live here. The city's always got a promise for you. Might be a lie, an illusion. But it's there, just around the corner, and it keeps you going. It's a city of dreams, and I'm a big dreamer.
Moving right along, talking about E3 2018, one of the major games shown off was The Last of Us Part 2, and yesterday, Naughty Dog celebrated the fifth anniversary of the very first game's release, and they tweeted out this, quote, Today is the fifth anniversary of The Last of Us' release. Over 17 million of you have taken the journey with us, and your love, support, and fandom for these characters and their story has been incredible. We can't wait to continue with Part 2. They attached an image saying, yes, over 17 million copies have been sold as of April 2018, and I would imagine that's across the PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4 version. Remember the game was released on June 14, 2013, and then a year later after the PS4 was released, they also put out The Last of Us Remastered, and if somehow you have yet to check out The Last of Us, you are doing yourself a major disservice. It is an incredible game with an amazing story, an amazing cast of characters, and it's a Naughty Dog title, and in my opinion, it's the best Naughty Dog title, and that says a lot when you look at their track record, and great to see that game has achieved the success that it deserves. Speaking of The Last of Us, Naughty Dog has confirmed that The Last of Us 2 will include a multiplayer component. Co-director Anthony Newman said in an interview with GameSpot, Factions is coming back, multiplayer is coming back. We're not going to talk details yet about what form it takes, but we can confirm there will be multiplayer. The Last of Us, while known for its incredible single-player component, actually had a really good multiplayer component in there as well. It was a lot of fun. And The Last of Us gameplay really transitioned well into a multiplayer setting, so hopefully we see something similar in The Last of Us Part 2. Obviously, I think the majority of people are going to be buying The Last of Us Part 2 for the single-player campaign, but the multiplayer is definitely a nice diversion that adds a little bit of longevity to the experience as well, so nice to see that making a return. And finally, we know that Kingdom Hearts 3 has an official release date, January 29, 2019. And after Kingdom Hearts 3 is out, you would imagine that Square Enix is going to put the majority of their attention on the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Well, speaking with IGN, Tetsuya Nomura revealed a little bit of stuff regarding the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Quote, it's not just in the early concept stages. We are actually in development. So right now, I've been putting 100% into Kingdom Hearts and 100% into Final Fantasy VII and 100% into Kingdom Hearts and going back and forth. The Final Fantasy VII Remake is another game where I could very well see this being a title that is pushed into next generation platforms. I would be shocked if Square Enix could somehow put out two gigantic JRPGs in a single calendar year. And the fact is, Final Fantasy VII Remake, while it's out of its early concept phase, still looks to be relatively early in development. Yes, we saw some gameplay back in 2015, but since then, they have been radio silent about the game, and I much prefer that. I don't like when developers show off a game so far out from release. Take your time, let us forget about it. Honestly, I would have liked if the Final Fantasy VII Remake was never even announced so we didn't have to constantly talk about it. We don't need to hear about these games so many years prior before it's released, but I get why they do it. It's not like every game can follow the Fallout 4 and the Fallout 76 release pattern where you announce the game and then release it a couple months later. But do we really have to announce games, you know, five years before they release? Final Fantasy VII Remake was announced back in 2015. 2020 would be the earliest I see this game releasing. I don't think that's really necessary, but hey, it is what it is. That is going to conclude this video. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. What do you think about the possibility of PlayStation Now receiving a download feature? Would this sell you on the service? For me, I think that would be huge. PlayStation Now is a little bit more expensive than Game Pass. I believe it's $19.99 a month opposed to $9.99 a month, and Game Pass gives you all the first party games. So that is still a selling point, but if we were able to download the game, but how would backwards compatibility work? I just don't know about that. But if they could somehow make it work, that would be incredible. Cyberpunk 2077, 
looks to be released on current gen platforms. We'll see though if it is a cross gen title. I assume it will be. Yesterday was the fifth anniversary of The Last of Us, and over 17 million copies have been sold. That is incredible success. And speaking of The Last of Us, The Last of Us Part 2 will have a multiplayer component. And the Final Fantasy VII Remake is out of its early concept phase. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.